Geralt, are you all right? I've been to the Isle of Avalach, among the apple trees and the mists. After the massacre in Rivia, Suri took me there, and Yennefer. The Wraith Riders kidnapped Yen, and I pursued them. But... Triss, this is important. I feel like everything's coming together. When the Witchers found me barely alive a half year ago near Kaer Morhen, I was fleeing the Wraiths of the Hunt. They continued to pursue me, in the outskirts, then in Vizima when I killed the Grand Master. Now I know it was no coincidence. Kieran mentioned roses of remembrance growing somewhere near here. Cedric claims likewise. If that's true... Right now I should be searching the forest for Yorvith, not looking for flowers. I could restore your memory. You sure? Everything seems to indicate that. Whatever's blocking your memory is clearly weakening. I think I could break that barrier with just one petal from a rose of remembrance. Those flowers are truly powerful. In that case, Yorvith can wait. Want me to go with you? Uh, of, of course. Sure, why not? I'd love your company. All right then. Let's go. Cedric mentioned there are some old elven buildings near the Cascade in the forest. We should start there. Lead the way. You gonna teleport traps. over there? Stop bloody moaning down there. Look, Coffer's dozed off. Wakey, wakey, Coffer. We learned a lot of information just now. Can we get a quick recap of everything that we just learned? Rose of Remembrance. So this guy Kieran mentioned that they had a meeting at a place called... The... Yeah, that the place where there's Roses of Remembrance. And we're also going there so that we can get our memory back. Okay. Okay. Sure, why not? Everything else is kind of like just happening at the same time. Following the conversation with Yorveth's adjutant, the search for the Kingslayer gathered momentum. However, other matters of greater importance to Geralt could not wait. The Witcher had a very serious conversation with Triss Marigold, the results of which are detailed in another thread. This one. <laughs> and only after he finished what he was asked did he continue the investigation. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, of course we should prioritize ourselves, because who cares about those people, okay? It's not, about, not really our business. Returning memories. The smell of apples brought a memory of the Isle of Avalach, the mysterious land where Geralt arrived after the events in Rivia, which I have not read up to yet. By the way, quick update, I finished reading The Baptism of Fire, and I'm about to start The Tower of Swallows. The Witcher once more lived through the wondrous experience of that place, but he was not to cherish them for long. Wonder turned into fury when Geralt saw a woman being kidnapped by the Wild Hunt, Yennefer. The abducted was very important to him. The Witcher realized that searching for her became his main goal in life. Mm. All right. Uh, one side <laughs> Look, thing I have to wet. say. Hey, birdie, you get wet just looking at me. Get ready, birdie. Jesus, let's we'll get out of here. See you right after our watch. You want to go? One thing that um is a little bit striking to me after talking to Tris for a little bit is that her voice actress change really changes my impression of who she is as a character. Because in The Witcher 1, her voice was deeper and more, I guess, sultry? Which made it seem like she was kind of calculating and manipulative. But here, she seems like such a sweet girl that I can't... Crikes, there's no reason for me to deny anything she asks of me. <laughs> Although I wonder why we could go alone. Uh, well, ah, okay. Maybe it's like a trust thing, because... Uh, gaining back our memory, that's sort of a private oh, thing, so we don't necessarily want to have someone with us when that happens. I guess that's the intention of what this is supposed to be. Do you know where this is? Rose of Remembrance. We're just gonna follow you and get there. Alright. Wow! Do you... Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not ready for this. How many more will turn out? Oh, okay. Hey, we're doing pretty good on these Andregas now. They shouldn't be too big of a problem for us. Although it's still annoying to run into them. Yeah, a few strikes and we're okay now. Not bad. Hey, I like your staff, Triss. It's very, it's very nice. You look like a, a wise mage. Circle of Endurance. One strike, we are on a roll. 
Can I have some Necker Eyes? My 20,000th Necker Eye, please, and thank you. You can see, you can hear something. Oh my god. Orange, 22, I'll take it. Is something... Something's happening over there. We don't have to necessarily... Do anything about it. It sounds like they're fighting already. Might be the Neckers and the Andregas. After we finish up this quest, I want to do some... I want to do a little bit of reading, because otherwise, my backlog is going to be... Oh! Wow, that was a complete accident. Our backlog is going to be quite big. Okay, forget about the snare, okay? Seriously, we're not going to use it, ever. Ah, there's so many! Mm, I think investing in that swordsman thing, the crowd control, multiple hitting multiple enemies, that was a good one. Yeah. Where are we? I just kind of want to know where we are. We are at some pond. Oh yeah, this is the pond where we found Osmurk inside the cave. Yes! No need to be, you know, making such scary sounds. Oh, there's another thingy here. I think we've arrived. The Cascade, the Menier. We need to take the path leading upwards. Gardens in the middle of forests? Those elves really like to complicate things. Stop whining. It's not far now. <laughs> really, like, Triss's voice gives off a completely different feeling from one. Cedric told me a beautiful legend about this place. Legends are almost always beautiful, especially elven ones. The reality often leaves a lot to be desired. Well, Cedric also said the site itself was something wonderful. Well, legends are beautiful because reality is ugly, right? Why would you want to make up something fake that's also ugly? The rose must be here somewhere. I'll look around. Alden and Cymoril. Cedric said Cymoril eclipsed even Francesca Findebear with her beauty, and Francesca's reputed to be the world's most beautiful woman. Cedric drinks too much. He really has visions, you know. He really has the gift. He could learn to control it if he drank less. Cedric drinks to get rid of the visions, and that's something I understand perfectly well. I'll brood some more, Geralt. Just want to take this opportunity to see what the ruined elven baths are that we just saw. Because it's always a good idea to see what the place is about as soon as we enter it, right? So it would be location. Yes. The inhabitants of Flotsam and its surroundings describe the nearby elven ruins in less than flattering terms. They're mostly limited... Oh, they mostly limited themselves to a heap of stones, my lord. Don't be going there alone or a necker will catch ye, and other similar phrases. I learned more when I brought Cedric a drink. Where bindweed and briar and twined splintered marble, buildings of captivating beauty had once stood. Today, only the ruins of the baths and elven statues remain, testifying to the past splendor of the place. Let's just finish this up. Prison barge, we were just there. The barge moored in Flotsam's harbor was used as a floating prison for captured Skoyatel and those accused of collaborating with the guerrillas. In unusually cramped and squalid conditions, the prisoners awaited transport to their final place of imprisonment and then, inevit and then interrogation and the inevitable noose. It's like a floating prison. Altar of Veopatis. Yeah, that's the thing that we saw before. The forested wilderness lining the banks of the Pontar conceals many secrets. Among them, an altar dedicated to an ancient deity named Veopatis, nestled deep in a forest glade. The spot is well hidden from prying eyes, and the dangers of the wood discourage those who would seek it frivolously. Geralt, however, had no fear of monsters and good reason to visit the mysterious site. Good reason? Praying? <laughs> praying? Does Geralt do any praying? Ancient elven buildings. And we know from one already that a lot of the places, a lot of, uh, I guess, towns and cities nowadays, they stem from elven foundations. Oh my, lovers. Look, girl, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand mm -hmm. it. How did the elves become so cruel? The one with the scar had so much hatred in him. 
Places like this make you realize just how much they've lost. There used to be entire elven cities, and the forests were theirs to enjoy, not to hide in. Humans destroyed that, put them in reservations. Yorvith and his kind are taking revenge, though not all elves are like that. Kieran said there's a lot more at stake. He has his ideal, a certain vision of the world. But do you think there's room for humans in it? We're practically one and the same. Wrong, Triss. We've been learning from each other for generations, but we're different at base. I don't know why I find that awfully sad. Just like this garden. Beautiful and sad. Many things are beautiful and sad. Like flowers. Oh. Rose of Remembrance, right here. Triss. Slimeril's Rose of Remembrance. Legend has it they wilt unless nourished with blood, and also if they're sold. But give it to someone you love, and it'll live forever. Excuse me? <laughs> um... Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Like I said, Triss, the voice acting, for the third time so far. Really different impression, and I feel like I like her new voice a lot more in terms of, like, um... Well, I don't know. Just from reading the books, I'm not sure which voice is closer to the real Triss. Maybe this one. I'm not really sure. Okay, have a flower. Why not? This one's for you. Oh, Geralt. I want you to keep it. If there's any truth to the legend, it shouldn't wilt. Even if you pluck a petal or two. Thank you. Oh. This is the statue, Curly. What the hell? Don't mind us. Imagine the corn we'll get. I won't leave the brothel for a month. Six weeks even. Where does that woman get the gold for all this? I mean, her and the old man, they're buying a new house. And now these statues for the garden. Must be defrauding the treasury. What's a town chancellor do anyway? Is that Louis Merce? He'd be plowing hard to move. We'd never shift it in one piece. I know. We'll break off the legs, the heads, <laughs> remove it in bits. Break off your own head, clown. Shut your trap, cunt. You just insult him. Kill them! <laughs> wow, our little romantic thing going on here was very quickly ruined. Triss! You don't have to burn people! That's a that might be a little bit too much. <laughs> I'm a brute! They ruined our good thing going on here. Watch out! Oh! Oh! oh. Whoa! what the end shape built before human ships ever appeared in the Pontar Delta. Wow. Elves possess a sensitivity humans can't ever hope to acquire. We're trapped. Thinking about it? We're going through all of this so that we can regain our memory because we gotta go find Yennefer who is important to us but at the same time we're like <laughs> she's not doing anything at the same time we're like giving roses to other girls i don't know what's going on there the wild hunt according to the nordlings the wild hunt is a procession or rather a cavalcade of skeletal horsemen they rush across the sky on bony remains of steeds clad in rusty remnants of armor they wear jagged swords at their waists like comets the Wild Hunt is an omen of war, which has been confirmed beyond all doubt. The Spectral Cavalcade ventures out in search of victims every several years, but its harvest was never as rich as just before the last war with Nilfgaard. 
when over 20 souls went missing in Novigrad, alone, after the hunt passed through. Curiously, elven and dwarven legends make not the slightest mention of the wild hunt. Ooh, what? So that's something only humans see? At least humans documents? What? That is strange. That's pretty strange. Is it a recent development? Because if so, if you think about the land, the dwarves were here first, and then the elves were here, and then the humans came here. So if the wild hunt is only something that started appearing after the, the humans came here, maybe that says something about how we've been treating the land. Again, going back to the sort of a theme in The Witcher 1 with the um, environmental issues, humans are just kind of degrading the whole land that they're conquering. Would you like a mandrake root, Triss? We can cast art over here, but is there anything else? Looks like we're stuck. Mm -hmm. Well, there must be another way out of here. Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at me that way? Do I have something on my face? Uh -uh. What's going on in that head of yours, Witcher? <laughs> what else goes on in the head of a Witcher? Oh, you know, stuff. You could use a bath. So could you. Why do I do this to myself? I'm just gonna have to censor this later. <laughs> That's far too convenient. thousand-year-old underground water. <sighs> Guess I should strip too. Oh, those boots are going to be great to walk around in later. Put entirely too much money into that cutscene. <laughs> uh oh. A witcher's blade. Letho comes here to think. Well, he's not here now, so we've no reason to stay. Scoia'tael? The Dwan stole the story of Elden and Saimaru, but they now steal our roses of remembrance. A more silly and shallow tale I've never heard. An enchanted wood, a beautiful elven couple living within. A handsome human prince arrives, riding a milk-white stallion. Uh. Bloody Dwan. We Enche remember how it was. Limitless devotion, passion, commitment. Uh. And sacrifice. Okay, they really put too much money into this. <laughs> Legend has it the lover's sighs are enchanted within these very stones, though only those in love can hear them. I'm surprised they can't hear us. Singing bushes, jabbering stones. Elvin Hogwash. Oh, God. Well, I'm buggered. <laughs> we should take walks more often. For a while there, I forgot all about Flotsam, the Scoia'tael, the Kingslayer, the whole world, really. 
Nice to know I still have that power. I need time to devise the spell. It could take as much as a few days. Mm -hmm. What do you plan to do while you wait? I'm going to meet Yorvith. Well, don't get yourself killed. That'd be pretty stupid now. What are you getting at? You're about to recover your memory, which will give you a whole new perspective on things. We'll learn what happened to Yennefer. Uh-huh. And you expect me to drop everything and tell Roach, hey, it's been great, but I've got places to go and people to find? You know, you could. I, I mean, you don't really owe him anything. I'm just afraid you'll get caught up in something and you won't be able to back out. Yorvath's a sly old elf. He's been fighting humans for a full century at least. This Letho is no common bandit either, and I shudder to think who put him on the warpath. It's a mire, Geralt. Deep and hungry, and it could swallow you whole before you know it. It possibly already has. I want you to know that I'm prepared to travel to the end of the world with you to save Yennefer. I owe you that. I owe her that. I'm prepared to drop everything. The trappings of court life, politics, the regicides. I could even live at Kaer Morhen. It's up to you. Triss. Let me finish. I can only say this once. If you want to go alone, I'll understand. And I won't try to persuade you otherwise. Oh, I'm not sure if I understand the implications of either of these choices. Um... I mean, I don't really feel attached to any of the... Any of the... Triss. Yeah, there's really only been Triss so far. I'm okay with or without her, but I don't really... Like, I feel like Geralt would not miss a chance to have a romping if he could. <laughs> uh. If all goes well, I'll catch the Kingslayer before you finish preparing the spells. And if it doesn't go well? Triss, do you really expect me to spend two days at the tavern drinking with the locals while Letho's out there taking control of a Scoia'tael unit? No, but what will you do? What if Yorveth scoffs at your news? What if he says Letho's escaped and no one knows where to find him? Will we go? Will we leave the regicide to Roach and continue with our own lives? Um... No, I don't think we can. We gotta... we gotta avenge... Oh, I forgot his name already. The King. What's his name? I forgot his name. The king! We gotta avenge the king! I really would like to go, but I need to clear my name. Foltest's men and bounty hunters of all kinds would never let Foltest. it go. We'd be fugitives, and that's not a life I'd want for me or for you. Besides, I'd feel as if I'd given up when there was still something to do. I'd feel like I fled, and as I see it, we haven't lost yet. Whatever your decision, I want you to know you can count on me. I need a few days to prepare the spells. I need to talk to Zoltan about Yorvith. It's not a closed conversation. We'll talk again, but only after I've settled things with the Kingslayer. All right. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad too. Are you going back for another bath? Gerald. Oh. Oh, oh why are Gerald. you here? Ah! There you are. Is everything all right? This is nice. What a beautiful place. Very. How do you find us? Finding those I seek is a speciality of mine. Now, let's get out of here. The Scoia'tael are out in droves. Those were Scoia'tael up there. There was a dwarf. There was a elf. Uh, okay. Are we out of here? Talk to Zoltan about the Scoia'tael. Uh, are we... Are we gonna tell Roach at all that... We're looking for your vet. I feel like we should fill him in, but uh Hey, are you guys coming? Yeah, no? Roach, do you wanna talk? Ah Oh. I found a patient's chart in the ruins of the hospital. You mean the burned down insane asylum? They committed him to the asylum because he'd insisted he'd been a prisoner of the Wild Hunt. He claimed he'd been in a world without humans, where he'd seen herds of unicorns. He managed to return to our world after a year, only to find his children had died of old age. Following this, Vernon, it means he'd been to a world where time flows a lot slower. 
so the world of the Wild Hunt is a place where time doesn't pass normally. We're assuming that Yennefer is with, like, there right now, right? As far as we know. Narita wants the Scoia'tael gone for good. He didn't say anything specific, but in his mind's eye, he saw them on the prison barge already. Yorvat's outsmarted bigger fish than the Commandant. Lorito's got something going with Sheila, so I'd take him seriously if I were you. You never know. Maybe the sorceress hunts more than monsters. I feel like it's becoming, very rapidly, a little bit hard to track what the hell is going on with the politics anymore. Because we know that, you know, Sheila and Lorito have a thing. Lorito wants to get rid of the Scoia'tael. The Scoia'tael, Yorveth, have their own thing going on with Letho, who betrayed them. And Letho is trying to kill kings, and, and Roach and I are trying to find him. So, ah, it's, it's all starting to get a little bit jumbled up in my head. You'll get a chance to show your medal. If we're to capture Foltest's murderer, we'll have to clash with the Scoia'tael. I sent the boys out into the woods. Tough going, too dense. My scouts got ambushed and barely escaped. It's no picnic hunting elves in the forest. Tell me something I don't know. My people saw the Kingslayer again. He knows we're here, but he's not even trying to escape. Seems he's waiting for something. I think it's our move. Does he want to talk to us at all? So long, Roach. So long. Anything else, Triss? Oh, we can't go for another bath. All right, that's that. Uh, weren't you gonna help me with my memory once we got the rose? Are we putting that off for a little bit? Yeah, Triss decided to accelerate the process by which Geralt would recover his memory. She wanted to use magic and needed a rose of remembrance for her spells, and we have one right now, so... Uh, I guess we're putting it off for the time being? Geralt doesn't, or uh, Triss doesn't like that Geralt wanted to see the whole thing with the Kingslayer through to its end. Because she just wants to leave and get out of here and have a happy life with me. Or whoever. She started preparing an infusion from the Rose of Remembrance. Oh, so we can only have one? And send the Witcher the Zoltan. You may recall that the Dwarf was in contact with the Skoyat's Hell and could bring Geralt to Yorveth. Well, it's always good to get the other side's point of view, I guess. Why not? We should go talk to Yorveth. If he's willing to talk to us, because the last time we met, the first and the last time we met, he was attacking us. Can we get another rose? Is that not a thing? Hmm. Actually, surprising that nobody else has tried to steal these statues in the past. But yeah, it's kind of... it's hard to steal. You can't just come here and, like, drag it away. We don't have that kind of technology. Okay. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's really any other side quests, so are we just going straight to Zoltan, then? I mean, there could be side quests that I don't know about, but I feel like for the ones that are obvious, we've pretty much gotten all of them. Mystic River, look for an opportunity to travel up further the Ponta River. Uh, I think that's not within within our reach right now. Because I don't have an opportunity to travel up. Maybe when we go talk to Yorveth. Okay, well, uh, I guess we should walk back to town. Hey, why is Triss here? How did you make it back here before me? Same stuff? Okay, you, uh, you have fun walking around. Something's troubling me. Zoltan should be here. Yep, they've been drinking for like 20 days now. Straight. Oh, this one's... Hold on, this one's new. Any news? Trissa sniffed something out. Apparently there are prisoners on the barge in the port. Squirrels, no less. Yes, we got that part. Zoltan, I need to ask you a favor. Shoot. I heard you know the local Scoia'tael. You heard? Meaning some goat's arse in a helmet hollowed it out in the market square. I need some way to get to this Yorveth. You know, I don't want you thinking I'm all chummy with the Scoia'tael. And Yorveth detests me. Why would you want to see him anyway? He knows where the Kingslayer is. Yorveth? And here I always thought I'm a common thug. All right. No reason to sit on our arses. Come on. You can tell me everything on the way. 
I feel like we have to be a little bit delicate. Lead on, Zoltan. Tell me, who said I have contacts with the Scoyatel? Hold on. Oh, not here. Maybe we can look at the, the glossary. What a prick. That's <laughs> why he wanted to hang you? For making deals with the squirrels? What? I met a few, yes, but made no fucking deals. What about their leader? They say Yorveth's mad, but the Scoyatel are at his beck and call. Sword knows what he wants. Hope he'll tell me what it is. Tell you what, of two evils, Lorido's the beggar prick. Because he almost hanged you? Because he stirs up the locals against non-humans. And as what, he's colluding with Kedwin. What's his angle? Greed! King Hensel would gladly annex more land and grant Lorido privileges. Come on, we've got a long way to go. I feel like I missed a lot of that conversation just now. Hold on. I was gonna say that I feel like we have to be really, really careful with our relations here, because... Remember what we told Lorito? We were like, hey, uh, we're gonna work with you because we... We hate Yorveth. And now we're going to Yorveth being like, hey, we want to work with you because we hate the Kingslayer and so do you. <laughs> it's gonna bite us in the butt if we're not, like, really careful with how this works. Now we're getting out here again. Yorveth! If they were on the map, where would they be? Oh, I can't really go out that much. I don't know. Somewhere <laughs> deep in the south? Oh, I was told to go back to the, the hideout here because apparently I missed something. So if we're going near there, that's the place that I would like to make another trip to. Is that gonna be a thing? Them closing the door on me? It's a dog's life, Geralt, I'll tell you that much. This is the exact same thing that we just did with Triss. Going back out. Hey Zoltan, sometime today, please. Although it is raining, it's very Whoa! We need to go deeper into the forest. I hope they didn't change the fast one. Whoa, they do like fancy dodging. I thought Zoltan was a pretty good fighter too, but he's not doing anything here. You know their password? What are you playing at, Zoltan? All right. The Scoyatel asked me to command a unit. No wonder Lorita wanted you hanged. <laughs> they may have asked, but I didn't accept their fucking offer. Well, I mean, I guess that's... This is it. <laughs> I was due to meet them here. I know. They're aiming arrows at us. What? Geralt, I know full well you're always vigilant, but quit poking fun at me. Give them the password. What them? Hurry up, they're edgy. They're hiding. Kierkegaard! Stop bawling. What do you want? Countersign. Heidegger. I asked you a question. Take us to Jorveth. Why? If we wanted to speak with you, we wouldn't ask for your leader. Jorveth won't talk with you. You don't know that. Leave while you're still able. The two of you won't scare us off. There are four more in that tree. How do you know? I can hear them breathing. One's sick, or on fist tech. How? He's wheezing. What? You elven cocks gone soft? We just want to talk to Yorveth. Wait at the clearing. The dwarf knows where. We'll let Yorveth know. Make sure you do. Come on, get out. I know what those okay. elven pricks have planned. Been there once. What are you talking about? That clearing is a monster's lair. Huge horse son with a shell on its back. An Ericus in these parts? I thought that was impossible. Ericus. Well, there's a Indrega right behind us. Hey, can you please give me that thing? Ooh. Take that. Can I not always get it? Huge clearing. Oh, there's another one. No wonder. One hit. Where is Zoltan? Oh, over there. Okay. I just want the loot, that's all. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. What? Oh. I don't know why I picked that up. Really. Would Yorveth... If I were Yorveth, would I want to talk to a witcher after another witcher just betrayed me? It's not like we come dime a dozen, so... Probably 
it's really only me and him around these days. What happened to the other witchers, by the way? The guys back at Karamoran, are they still there? I guess I'm the only one out here like this? We're here. That creature prowls down there. Right where we're supposed to meet Yorveth. Exactly. Any ideas? Beat it up. I last fought an Ericus some time ago. I never had the swiving pleasure. Not that I mind. Wait here. What are you... Think me a limp prick? That's the... That's the spirits. Okay. How exactly do we go... Here? It's a dog's life, Geralt. I'll tell you that much. Probably a good time for us to save, too, huh? Alright. Another big monster. Can't be as hard as the Karen. I don't believe so, so I think we'll be okay. Especially because we have the... Oh, but we should drink a Swallow Potion, shouldn't we? Or we could rely on the Circle of Life. Do we have anything... Any other potions that would be good? Every second we're spending in here is one less second for the Circle of Life. Okay, Swallow Potion 10 minutes. Whatever, we can do this. Yeah, we can do it in 3 minutes. This is the place the elves mentioned. That thing approaching us is no elf. I'll leave it to you, Geralt. Monsters are not my speciality. Fair enough. Eric. How many more can there be? Ooh, this guy's... Hold on, I know this is really like... <laughs> We're just stopping. Oh, shoot! <gasps> Suddenly I know why they put the monster knowledge in the meditation menu and not here. Because now I can't look at it. I should have looked at it earlier when I was gonna take a swallow potion. It's okay, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Whoa, okay, you know what? I can't really hit its back because it's got this huge, very strong tail. Or a shell. Just hang back a little bit, make sure that our health has time to come back. Ooh, all in a day's work. Still had two minutes left. Great. Er ah! A lovely show, Gwynblade. But tell me, was it worth it? An uneven fight and certain death await you anyway. I could ask you the same thing. What do you want, Vatgern? Speak quickly before I kill you both. What is Vatgern? His right hand elf said the same thing to me earlier. Vatgern. Uh, protect our friend first. Let Sultan go, Yorveth. You have me. I have you both. A witcher apparently seeking an ugly death, and a dwarven traitor spitting on the honor of his folk. You know what I spit on, you devit? On you, bloody squirts, riffraff, killing innocent men. Innocent men? So agitated when you shout that, it's even funny. This is not related to anything, but um, when this guy first appeared, Yorveth? Somebody in the comments mentioned that he looked like Daniel Craig, and now I can't unsee it. <laughs> okay, yes. Forget about what Lorito said. I want the Kingslayer. Letho. The man whose crimes I'm accused of. If you hadn't become Foltest Lackey, you wouldn't have been there when he was murdered. Do you really expect me to betray a useful ally? He betrayed you. I already know this. Ah, would he really? F um, fine. You attacked us on the riverbank for no reason. You owe me. Not so. The only Dwan I owe anything is Roach. But believe me, I shall pay that debt soon. I'm not about to accuse him, okay? Like, <laughs> That's not good for our, you know, being alive, staying alive. Letho betrayed you. 
He wanted to make a deal with your comrade, Kirin. Kirin Ep Esnilin is dead. Two weeks ago, his warriors were ambushed and killed. You should invent better lies, Gwynblade. He's on the barge, wounded but alive. He turned Letho down, and his unit paid the ultimate price. If you speak the truth, Letho will die. But words alone are not enough. What's your angle, Yorvith? You wouldn't understand. Hiding in woods, killing berry pickers, eating roots. We live by our own rules, doing what's necessary to attain our goal. But what is your goal? I feel like everyone's been kind of vague about it so far. Since you're the Skoyatel, I feel like the Skoyatel goal is, to some, is something like... I don't know, eliminate all humans so that elves can be free, but uh, not sure how... Like, how radical you are on that scale of, hey, we can coexist with humans, versus, die, all humans die. What is your goal? What's it to you, Geralt? Eseth Vatgen? You tell me to stuff it up my ass. Not everything deserves that fate. <sighs> my life now depends on your whim, so I'm curious. Then listen well. The two dead kings were Horsons who damned their own children to stay in power. But in the East, there's someone truly deserving of a crown. Wait. Oh, okay. Uh, two dead kings. The one in the cutscene and Foltest. Somebody in the East? So you're, you're political too. You're like helping the king in the East? Okay. You attack and murder the people of Flotsam, forgetting that elves and dwarves live among them. That's no life. They've been stripped of self-respect, forced to live and die by human laws. They're more Dwan than you, Geralt. So the hired assassin turned out to be a traitor? It's his word against yours. For now, why do you trust him? Because he's a Dwan who agreed to do shady work for you? He did what had to be done. He proved nobody's untouchable. Hmm... But he's not an elf. You still trust this assassin? You may be lying. If I'm lying, so did Kirin. We'll investigate it for his sake. We shall see how Letha reacts to your sensational news. Where is he? The ruins of Kelmawed. For some reason, he likes the place. My unit will cover us. Ready? Okay. Huh. He's accepted us for the time being. Why did you want Foltest dead? He might have appeared charming, but in reality, he allowed the elder races in Temeria to be oppressed. He was like old Dwan, but his death has more significance. Okay, you're letting me do other things first. Okay. Let's meet there. I have something to take care of first. Vafel, Gwynblade. Just don't try any tricks. We came here together, we're leaving together. No, Zoltan. Your presence might raise suspicions. As you wish. Just don't get slaughtered. Hey, did they take away my... my loot for the Arrakis? Are you for real? I didn't even get to pick it up yet earlier. Oh, that makes me... Hey, hey! Ericus armor. Ericus trophy. Trophies are probably things we should be looking at right away. Damage 4 to 5, vitality plus 25, damage bonus on signs plus 2. Well, the Karen trophy is epic. This one's rare. Yeah, I'm okay with what we have right now. Sure. Uh, we're in the middle of the forest right now, but do we want to read? Because I've been saying that for a while now, and I think we're coming to the end of this chapter soon? Feels like it. We're going to find the Kingslayer. The Arrakis was slain, but a more dangerous foe emerged from the forest. It turned out to be Yorveth, Daniel Craig. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Geralt had a chance to discuss. 
Letho's betrayal with the elf, and was every bit as diplomatic as the situation allowed. And know that the situation did not allow much leeway for the lives of Zoltan and Geralt hung by a thread throughout. Well, I never really felt like they were gonna attack me, so... If I called him a murderer, would he attack me? Maybe. Alright, okay. Let's read a little bit. We're done with locations. Characters. Melina. Yes. Melina, I think we read the beginning parts already. Melina was arrested and charged with being an accessory to murder. She suffered the consequences of her deeds. That's pretty vague. I think she died. They were talking about it, right? Dimitri, before we killed him. The Troll of Flotsam. Once the death of his beloved had been avenged, the troll pulled himself together, promising to rebuild the bridge and quit drinking. I hope to live to see to that day. Gasper, who the heck is that? In Flotsam, Geralt bumped into a pair of strange scholars. The alchemist Gasper was one of them. He and his colleague Farid tried to convince the Witcher to take part in a mysterious experiment on the Witcher on Witcher like physiology. The study would only yield results many years down the road. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what we did though. I felt like we just talked. Yeah, same thing. Arnold. Supposedly involved in commercial dealings with Bernard Lorito. This man was a frequent guest at the Commandant's abode. Fiora Vanti? A truly enterprising man, the merchant Fiora Vanti had found a niche that produced for him a decent income. Wait, is this the incense guy or...? Though his specialization was extremely narrow, this was the very key to his success. No, 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 no! That's how marketing and, you know, selling and business works. You gotta find a niche. For the secret of commerce is to be the exclusive provider of a certain category of goods or services. Exactly. Thus, Vioravanti was still in business, despite his forced stopover in Flotsam. Ah, this is one of the people that we saw in Flotsam. They were like, hey, I'm not from here, but I'm stuck here because they won't let me go. Louis Merce was a typical example of widespread bureaucratic nepotism. It was rumored that he had outright fled Vizima after bringing some unsavory troubles down upon his head. His cousin Lorito then granted him a comfortable posting in Flotsam, and Mur saw this as a second chance. Cousins, they're cousins. Forgot that part. Small town, that's perfect brewing spot for nepotism. Although, it is a small town, but it's also a really important town, so that's that's really not good. Einar Gosel. If Lobinden's non-humans had been organized as a community, the dwarf Einar Gosel would have been the closest thing to its leader. Though the Scoyatel considered him a collaborator on a human leash, Einar tried to represent the non-human minority as best as he could, even if that meant mediating between its members and the Commandant. Furthermore, he ran something akin to a bookshop, given its location and what was a complete backwater. His selection of titles was quite impressive. We should go get a haircut soon. No mention of the haircut, really? Dimitri. Comparing Dimitri to a Zangwibari hyena, would be an insult to the poor animal. Unlike the beast, this scoundrel fed not only on carrion, but also on human and non-human misfortune. It was thus that he gathered his blood money. Even mentioning Dimitri in this story elevates him far more than he deserves. Thus, let us merely note that the Witcher took his life and say nothing more of the son of a bitch. <laughs> Rupert. This guy looks exactly like Gasper. Geralt first ran into him near the asylum. The Adernian medic claimed he had come to the area with his friend Gridley in search of rare herbs. However, it appeared they had underestimated the dangers lurking in both the forest and the ruins. Something was missing from his story, however. Rupert had been a medic in a field hospital during the war. He and his friends had committed a crime back then. Years later, the wraith of, Nilfgaardian, of the Nilfgaardian soldier they had tortured to death summoned them to the scene of the crime, so to have its revenge. Even though Rupert was a reprehensible criminal, Geralt did not give him to the Wraith. Yet he decided the villain must pay for their deeds. Thanks to the unexpected intervention of a certain woman, they were arrested, possibly for other crimes. Well, I feel like... Well, being alive but tortured versus being straight up killed by the Wraith? I don't know which one's better. Same thing, Gridley. Gridley was... Oh, he had been stationed in the area during the war. 
His unit had tortured a Nilfgaardian soldier, mm -hmm, all in the name of finding a treasure. Same thing, pretty much. The degenerates had committed other crimes for which they would now face punishment. Okay. Uh, how do you pronounce his name again? Kieran? Had served in Yorveth's unit as the elven commander's adjutant. Captured and imprisoned on the prison barge by Lorito's men, his position was unenviable to say the least. Yet he still demonstrated the pride and stubbornness so characteristic of the Ens and Shade. Triss? Um, I think I've read up until... Here. The sorceress's greatest desire was to be the one and only woman in Geralt's life, and to forget all about the troubles and dangers they had recently experienced. Geralt was close to agreeing to her proposal, yet he knew it would be impossible to lead a quiet life until he could clear his name. His decision sat in Triss, but the sorceress understood. Ah, well, we gotta, like, look for Yennefer and all that too, right? Speaking of which, I suddenly remembered that, um, I forgot which book it was. Was it... I think it was The Time of Contempt? There was a scene where Geralt, Triss, and Yennefer were at a dinner party thing. And Geralt walked off for a little bit, but he saw in the distance that Yennefer was basically telling Triss, Hey, back off my man, stop trying to pursue him. And she did seem to back off after that, because I don't think anything about Triss liking me was ever mentioned again, or uh, liking Geralt. But if we think about how the games are a continuation of the books, then it's kind of like, Oh, Yennefer's gone now, now's my chance to get with Geralt. Kind of feels a little bit like that. Vess. Uh, I think we did look at Vess last time, didn't we? Yes, I remember reading this. Yes, Vest had a steady hand and sure eye, making her the best sharpshooter in the unit. Not many could match her in throwing knives either. <laughs> I never even got a chance to throw knives. Sheelard Fitz... Westerlin. <laughs> I can't even tell from this name whether it's a guy or a girl. Many northern kings appear in this story, rash and thoughtful, amorous and frigid, brave and cowardly. The reader should easily see that should their crowns be removed in a pitchfork, sword, a bunch of bills, or a goat's apple given in a scepter's stead, they would be as human as we are. The same, however, could not be said of the Emperor of Nilfgaard, the white flame dancing on the barrows of his enemies, whose shadow fell over all the events I've written down. In this case, that shadow was represented by Sheila Fitz Westerlin, a consummate diplomat who started more than one war, only to end it accepting homage from the defeated. Ah, this is the guy we saw in the beginning talking to Foltus, and the Foltus was like, uh, whatever, man, I, the Nilfgaardian. Mary Louisa Lavalette. I have chanced to visit the court of the Lavalettes on several occasions in the past. Invariably, I was greeted and received a manner befi befitting of my fame and talent. Baroness Mary Louisa was a very comely woman, her beauty having fully blossomed, her hair dark, her lips sensuous. As with many women married to markedly older men, rumors about her were plentiful. Among them, one claiming that she had a love affair with King Foltis himself, and that the monarch had fathered her younger children. I guess it's still a rumor, but uh, could they actually test back in the day whether that's true or not? Arian Lavalette. Oh, yeah, this is the, the guy that torched himself. Baroness Lavalette's eldest child, Arian, was beyond all doubt her and the old Baron's son. Raised to be a knight, he sought to uphold the virtues of the state, valuing courage and valor, and striving by his every deed to embody them. He must have felt extremely discom extreme discomfort by the conflict that engulfed him, as at its roots lay his mother's and family's honor, pitted against the widely discussed rumors of a love affair between the Baroness and King Foltest. Though the situation was dire, the young knight valiantly commanded the defense of his family's castle, intending to not give an inch of ground. Seeing that further assistance, resistance, was hopeless, Arian yielded, laid down his arms, and placed himself at the king's mercy. Fate seeks forever to amuse itself, and toward this purpose likes to play tricks. It brought the former foes together once more, as both fled the dungeons beneath the Lavalette family's vast abode. Honor prevented the proud youth from fleeing his family seat while it was in enemy hands. Arian made a decision that meant certain death for himself, 
but he nevertheless made it without hesitation, sealing with a sacrifice the bloodiest chapter ever in a Lavalette family annals. He... I guess... Yeah, he torched the whole castle, the, the prison part anyway, so people probably didn't make it out alive. Hey, he's a re... wait, he's a main character? Okay, but he's dead. Damn. Boosie! No more than a lad back then, Boosie already displayed the pride and obstinacy, typical of the Lavalettes. Some, however, attribu attributed these qualities to the fact that King Foltis was his father. Well, for one, they have different hair colors. Hmm. Kingslayer. Disguised as a blind monk, the mysterious assassin took Geralt by surprise, displaying immense self-control and lightning reflexes, not to mention a talent for acting. He murdered the king before the witcher's very eyes. He then leapt out the window of the solar before Geralt could grab him. Surviving the fall unharmed, the assassin fled with the aid of some Skoyat's help. The information in Vernon Roche's possession served to confirm what Geralt had witnessed. A man matching the Kingslayer's description had been seen in the company of Skoyatel nearing the trading post of Flotsam. Finding him seemed like the Witcher's only chance. The mysterious individual now had a name. It appeared that this Letho, whoever he might be, was playing his own game, one in which the Skoyatel had become an Im impediment. Yet his ultimate objective remained a mystery to Geralt. Letho had indeed been working with the squirrels, doing their wet work for them. Geralt would soon learn the answers to many more questions. I guess not all witchers come from Kaer Morin. They mention, right? Uh, Geralt has the wolf medallion, but do other witchers have other... other clan medallions? Maybe that's why we don't know him. Demavend! Son of Verf... Verf... Verferil? Rule the kingdom of Edern. Is that... a kingdom to the east? Which was mightily aggrieved during the last war with Nilfgaard, a proponent of the authoritarian rule, he was seen to have no love for non-humans. He often moved radically against the Skoyatel, though he drooled in spite of himself when the guerrillas perpetrated massacres on his own people, as these justified the punitive expeditions he delighted in sending to the foothills of Dalblathana. He also showed no shyness towards imprisoning and torturing rabble-rousers and street prophets who would interfere in his politics. Thus, it is no wonder that many could not wait to see him dead. In spite of this, his subjects could not help but be surprised by his death, for it is not every day that a crowned head paints the palace floor with its blood. Oh, so this is the other guy that died. Is that the guy in the, the cutscene then? Yorveth! They say all elves are beautiful, that they are born thus. In Yorveth's case, someone settled to change this, thus marking his face with an ugly scar that the elf partially hid beneath a crimson headscarf. Ah, that's a, that's a wound. I thought that was a fashion statement. Yorveth was a living legend, the elusive leader of a Skoyatel unit whose members gave no thought to laying down their arms and continued their war against humans. Stories of his deeds, of his deep hatred of Duan, painted him as more akin to a vengeful ghost than to an individual made of blood, bone and flesh. Well, that's how stories go, right? We met him. He seems not that bad, actually. Certain sources claim that Yorveth was the Kingslayer's ally and thus involved in recent events. Yet Geralt's first meeting with the elf brought few answers and ended with Skoyatel archers laying down a deadly barrage. Indeed, it seemed that at the time, the elf wouldn't only ever answer the Witcher with arrows. In the eyes of some people, like Lorita or Roach, Yorveth was a common criminal, his hands stained by the blood of innocence. Indeed. Oh yeah, forgot about that part. Okay, maybe he's not so good. Indeed, the list of those he had cut down in his fight for freedom could easily rival the number of ballads, romances, and ditties in my repertoire. The elf was certainly a dangerous individual. He was not, however, a bloodthirsty monster. Ever cautious and aware of the game he was playing, he jumped at the chance of testing Letho's loyalty, becoming Geralt's ally, at least temporarily. Ah, um, he's not stupid. He didn't live for a century by being stupid. Zoltan Chive. The dwarf Zoltan Chive is a close friend of Geralt's, Geralt's and mine. Met while we were sneaking through the forests and wilderness of Bruges and Sodden, when war raged all around, and the hooves of Nilfgaardian cavalry thundered on the high roads. So that was in the Baptism of Fire, which I have finished reading now, so I have met Zoltan in the books. Like many of his kin, he later fought at Brenna, 
in the Mahakam Volunteer Detachment, a unit that contributed greatly to the victory, although this fact is sadly ignored by most chronicles. After the war, he wanted to start a business, and even though even thought of taking a wife, yet fate had things arranged a bit differently. Zoltan had proved his friendship to the Witcher many times, eagerly standing at his side in any moment of need. Disproving those who claim that each and every dwarf is a spiteful, aggressive son of a bitch, that they do not care for human plight, and that coexistence is impossible. I know many non-humans, and if anything stands in the way of coexistence, it is human ignorance, spite, and ungratefulness. They say a dwarf would get himself hanged for a friend, but Zoltan was in my company on the scaffold for another reason. The local authorities had accused him of colluding with the Skoyatel. Ah, that's the reason. And that is usually enough to earn one of the main role in entertainment, like a morning execution. The charges that Zoltan had contacts with the squirrels were not entirely baseless, Though he did not actively participate in military action, the dwarf knew the unit's leader, Yorveth, among others. It was not surprising, really, that having encountered the aforementioned human spite and ungratefulness at every step, Zoltan sympathized with the dwarven and elven freedom fighters. He was balanced in his views, however, and valued loyalty to old friends above all else. Politics? Maybe a lot of people don't really know exactly where they stand in politics, but I think Loyalty to friends is something that most people can stand behind. Bernard Lorito At the time of this story, Bernard Lorito was a commandant of the town watch of the river port and trading post of Flotsam. He was well suited to the position, amply demonstrating this through his brutal and heavy-handed approach to enforcing the law and meting out justice to the town. This boorish veteran of the Temerian army was perfectly happy with his posting to this backwoods as he had turned the borderland settlement into a private fiefdom, which he ruled through fear and might, passing and executing judgment at whim. I was exceptionally lucky to escape the noose back then. Despite my deepest desire to the contrary, it would not be the last time we saw Bernard Lorito. In spite of maintaining a smokescreen of law and order in Flotsam, Lorito was, a benevolent, was benevolent to non-humans as Emperor Emir was to proponents of democracy. Oh, okay, so not at all. <laughs> Given the slightest excuse, Bernard would have gladly rid the trading post and its environs, environs? Of all who were not human, using any means available. Much evidence suggested that Lorito was profiting heftily from his position through extortion, unlawful confiscation of goods, and brazen bribe-taking. He would enlist local goons to beat and intimidate all who were uncooperative. And this was very much the order of the day. Lorito yearned for some spectacular success in his fight against the Skoyatel. Though his prison barge was overcrowded already, capturing Yorveth remained his deepest desire. Cause that's like his last goal. If he can get Yorveth, he can basically control the whole Pontor Valley by himself. John Natalis It seems that every other person you met, you meet, took part in the last war against Nilfgaard. Got that right. Such are the times in which we live, yet we best remember those who made their mark in the annals of the conflict. John Natalis, Constable of Temeria, is one such person. Supreme Commander of the Cumulative Forces of the North at the Battle of Brenna. Natalis fought valiantly, commanded wisely, and contributed vastly to the victory. Despite being outnumbered, the enemy, two to one. And he did not rest on his laurels after the battle. Instead, he pursued the foe, routing him. Nec Nuncius Cladus. Don't know what that means, or nearly so leaving but a few stragglers to flee beyond the Yarga. John Natalus was honored richly for his deeds, and a square in Vizima now bears his name. After Foltest's death, Natalus temporarily served as regent of Temeria. The only person that everyone trusts, for now. Sheila, the Tensorville. I know from experience that magicians are not above lusting for power. Among sorceresses alone, there are many whose ambition leads them, pulls strings, moving kings and other mighty forces of this world. To command the elements in spectacular fashion, summon genies, bend fate, dictate royal proclamations, or at least to force others to eat chicken with cutlery. <laughs> that is why magicians such as Sheila de Tanserville, known as the Koviri Loner, stood apart from the others. Lady Sheila was not known to interfere in politics, at least not visibly, instead dedicating her days to research, strict, calm and collected. Unlike the other sorceresses, she did not display her feminine charms, nor did she flirt with men jiggling her posterior before them at every occasion. Though, 
and I must remain true to myself here. The world would undeniably be a much poorer place without typical sorceresses. Yeah, yeah, Dandelion. The reason for Sheila de Tanserville's presence in a backwater town like Flotsam was initially a mystery. Yet it quickly became clear that she had come here because of the Karen, a river monster. We don't know what she wants yet though, with Lorito. Four sorcerers gladly used the organs of exotic creatures as ingredients for magical preparations, and Sheila was no exception. Sheila's presence also turned out to be a lucrative opportunity for Zoltan, however odd that might sound. The dwarf cut gems for her magical apparatus. Oh yeah, what's up with that? One has to admit that Sheila's help proved to be useful. The sorceress did not fear the monster and bravely fought, aiding the witcher with her powers. Okay, we cleared up the the characters for now. The other ones, I will leave it alone for the time being. Diagrams, we're not reading that, actually. Yeah, I'll leave glossary and monsters for next time, although there's really not too much anyway. And there's also the knowledge. We can read about dragons and wraiths in our knowledge section. Okay, where the heck are we now? We are... We're here, and we want to go here, if we want to go with Yorve. But before we do that, I'm guessing this is like a point of no return. So we should be doing anything else that we want to before that, which means I'm going to see what's going on over here. Okay, yeah.